Hello, today I'm going to talk about the key cloak project. In this presentation, I'm going to walk you through various problems we're solving with the key cloak project. And in between some of the slides, I'm going to demo various features we currently have implemented. After this, I'll walk you through a little bit of the architecture of key cloak. And then finally, we'll talk about future features we currently have on the roadmap. Keycloak is an authentication server that provides single sign-on for browser applications. It supports various credential types. It supports password as well as one-time password generated via a Google Authenticator application. Keycloak also supports authentication of RESTful web services and it also supports OAuth grants. OAuth grants are the ability to grant permission to a third party to access RESTful services on behalf of a different user. This is what it looks like. Here we have a picture of various web apps deployed on our network. If we visit a particular website, we'll be redirected to the Keycloak authentication server where we'll be asked to enter in our username and password. Once we're authenticated with the authentication server, we're redirected back to the web app and we are logged in. Once we are logged in once, we can visit any web app that is secured by um, the Keycloak authentication server without having to re-log in and enter our credentials again. Keycloak not only supports simple single sign-on, but it also supports end-to-end -end sign-on between browser and RESTful web services. It does this via token propagation. So, when a browser um, accesses a website, the the website will redirect the browser to the authentication server so that the user can log in. Once the user is logged in, the browser is redirected back to the web application. And behind the scenes, the web application obtains a token from the authentication server. The web app can then use this token to, to invoke on secure RESTful web services. It does this by stuffing the token within an HTTP authorization header when it makes an HTTP request. Native clients can take advantage of this feature by um, re requesting a login via the authentication server and getting a, a token which it can then use to invoke on RESTful web services. Native clients can be really anything, um, an iOS device, an Android device, um, Microsoft or Java desktop application. Keycloak tokens are obtained via the OAuth 2 protocol. They are a proprietary extension of the JSON Web Token format. They are digitally signed via JSON Web Signature Specification. The token contains basic identity information, the expiration policy of the token, as well as user role mappings for the user that the token was assigned for. So, web apps actually have no knowledge of user metadata. They, they don't know anything about identity, and they don't know anything about user role mappings. So, the way it works is that when a web app obtains a token from the authentication server, the token contains the principle and the role mappings for that principle. So the web app extracts that information from the token and makes decisions on whether or not the user can visit various parts of the web app based on that metadata within the token. Okay, now that I've described a little bit about what Keycloak can do, let's see it in action via a um, very simple demo. In this demo, we have two applications deployed and secured by Keycloak. We have a customer portal and a product portal. Um, the customer portal um, logs on the user and obtains a token from the Keycloak authentication server. It uses this token to make a secure RESTful request to a database REST service to get a customer listing that it displays back to the browser product does something very similar. It authenticates with the authentication server, obtains a token, and um, uses that token to obtain a product listing which it displays back to the browser. So this is the welcome page of our customer portal. It is unsecured. To, to access the customer listing, we're going to click on this customer listing link. This customer listing link is actually secured. So when I click on it, I'm going to be redirected to the redirected to the Keycloak authentication server so I can log in. I'm going to throw in my username and password here. And what happened was once I hit login, 
I was redirected back to the customer portal. Behind the scenes, the customer portal um, made a web request to the authentication server to obtain a token. The portal customer portal application used that token to talk to the backend database REST service to obtain the customer listing that you see on the screen here. Now, to, now that I'm logged in, I can visit other applications and not have to re-enter my credentials. So if I click on the products link here, I can visit the product portal application and I can get a product listing. Keyclick not only supports single sign-on, it also supports single sign-off. Here we have a logout link that um, points to the authentication server. If I click on this logout link here, I'll be redirected to the authentication server. And the authentication server in the background will make an HTTP request to each registered application and tell the application to log out any sessions that are set up for this particular user here. So when I click on log out, I will be logged out of the product portal and the customer portal. So if I visit the product listing, you see that um, I have to log in again. Another thing I'd like to show you is um, setting up a Google Authenticator. To be able to do that, uh, we're going to need to go to the Keycloak Administration Console. So let's do that. So, out there in the um, admin username, admin password, and we'll be able to be at the uh, Keycloak console. So, by default, users are required to enter in a password. On this particular page here, we can tell the, the demo realm here that we are also want to require a, a one-time password as well as um, a general password as well. So here I'm saying, hey, you know, I want you, you're going to be required to enter in a one-time password and a password. I'm going to save those changes here. So now, when um, I go to the customer portal and I click on the customer listing, I'm going to have to set up um, a Google Authenticator. It brings us to this page. Google Authenticator um, can be installed on an iPhone or uh, an Android device, and I actually have it installed on my iPhone. And what I'm going to do here is uh, set up a one time password. And uh, what you see here, we have a nice barcode here. This barcode here contains information for initializing the, the Google Authenticator. And the Google Authenticator application can actually scan this barcode in. And I'm going to do that right now. Okay, I scanned it into my iPhone app, and uh, now I have to test the one-time password generator. So I'm going to enter in the current um, password, the, per the current generated key, and hit submit. And it worked. So now um, I am logged in, and I'm able to access the customer listing. So I'll log out, and we'll re-log in so you can see the Google Authenticator in action. So I enter in my my regular password and now I have to enter in my uh, one-time password that I am reading right now from my iPhone. Hit login and now we have that. Okay, let's log out now. Alright. Let's look at some other features of Keycloak. Keycloak can also do a social media login. You can use Keycloak as a one-stop identity broker adapter so that users can use their Facebook, Google, Yahoo accounts to, to log into your particular application or applications. Um, Keycloak also has registration capabilities as well. This is often useful for those who do not want to use Facebook and want to register with your particular application to create a user. We can actually see this in action with Keycloak. Okay, so again we have to go back to the administration console. And right now you see that registration user registration is turned off. So let's turn it on. Save our changes here. By default, um, users have no roles associated with them. They have no permissions. So um, that's not going to be particularly useful in this particular demo we have here because uh, Sure, we can, a, a user can register, but they're not going to be able to access our customer portal or our product portal. So what we can do is we can click on this registration link here. 
and the registration link um, allows us to define default roles for when a when a user registers it it will automatically um, be granted these particular roles so what we have to do to be able to access the customer and product portal we have to uh, say that uh, default by default people who register are going to get user privileges so we'll do that right now okay so let's go back to our customer portal and now when we try to access a page and we it'll bring us to the login page and you see now we have a register link when we click, click on a register link we can register ourselves and let that turn a really simple name Baba really simple password And I also have to set up um, a Google Authenticator for this registered user. So let's do that. Okay, I've set up a, a, an additional account on my iPhone for my Google Authenticator. So let's enter in the, the one-time password. And now I'm logged in with that registered user. Okay, let's log out with this guy. Go back to the presentation. Okay, so Keycloak also has um, a user account management page that each user can access to do things like um, uh, change information about themselves, uh, change their password, uh, create a new uh, Google Authenticator, that sort of stuff. So let's actually see this thing. Okay, let's log in as B. Burke again. With our username, password, and our one time password. Okay, see, now that we're logged in, you see that the um, customer portal is displaying a manage, manage account link here. When I click on that, I'm going to be brought to the user account management service that is um, um, shown by the uh, authentication server. So we click on that. You can see you can do things like uh, change your email, first and last name. Um, you can change your password. Um, we can update our uh, authenticator as well. Okay, so okay, that's going to be end of part one of this video. Um, in part two, I'll talk about cores, um, OAuth two grants, and we'll go over the architecture of Keycloak.